another from that. era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This on TV, on radio, and on your smartphone. This is Talk TV. Look, I'm getting ready for my new primetime show on Talk TV and radio, 7 o'clock Saturday night, James Whale Unleash. I don't need you coming in here, following me around with a cow. I'm so sorry about this. Saturdays at 7 on Talk TV. Very good morning to you. It's just gone 5 o'clock. It's Thursday, the 18th of April, and this is your early breakfast show on Talk, where we're on TV, on DAB, on your smart speaker, and we're live from the news building here in London. So, later this hour, Richard Hunter from Interactive Investor, he's back with the latest business news. We'll be uh, looking forward to some company results, finding out how uh, the markets have fared to date and whether an interest rate cut is on the way. Also, uh, we'll find out who's been sacked for nicking a bag and an elephant that escaped. As always, you can get involved in the paper review. But this morning, interest rates are set to fall slower than expected. The economy is sluggish and inflation remains above the 2% target. How would you kickstart the economy? So, very good morning to you. A variety of stories on the front pages today. Uh, the Times leads on hopes of rate cuts suffer blow. Inflation falling more slowly than expected. Markets factoring in just one interest rate reduction before the election. City AM also talks about that. Slowly, slowly, they say inflation falls, but analysts warn snail's pace. Price hike come down will delay Bank of England rate cut. Uh, then uh, some of the other newspapers, just so you know what else is going on. Lords defy will of the people. <laughs> I don't know whether it's the will of the people. How much do you want this Rwanda bill? Anyway, uh, the Lords have stuck their noses in and they've gone against convention and that bill still hasn't gone through. Uh, are those planes ever going to take off? Probably not. Daily Mail, interesting story here. Tories trail Labour on defence, tax, migration and even Brexit. But an exclusive poll for the Mail finds that 45% of people still don't want a Starmer government. I mean, it kind of says that maybe 55% of people do. I don't, I don't know. I'm not one of them, but it is what it is. Uh, shameless to the very end. Um, uh, this is a murder story on the front page of the Mirror. Meanwhile, The Sun focuses on Prince Harry. American Idol Harry, Prince officially a US resident. Nobody cares. Uh, the Daily Telegraph. Rayner faces new homes tax questions. Dozen strong police team investigating the deputy Labour leader over House Row. Uh, the Financial Times talks about um, IMF debt warning raises doubts over Sunak's bid to axe national insurance. Fund says that critical action is needed. Starmer draws parallel with Truss. Oh, dear. Um, apparently, uh, Brexit is being blamed, uh, according to The Guardian, as the UK drug shortages put lives at risk. Uh, they've also got the extraordinary rainfall in Dubai. Um, a year and a half's rain in 24 hours uh, over there. The Daily Star talks about um, big cats escaping and the I newspaper Israel will defy plea for restraint and strike Iran, Cameron reveals. So there you go. Those are the front pages. But let's get back to this story about the economy because I take the view, rightly or wrongly, I take the view that if the economy isn't fixed, then you can't do all the other things that need to be done. So we've got to have uh, a bigger and a more vibrant economy if we've got to afford to pay for the health services and the fix in our infrastructure and all these other things. But I do worry about the direction of travel. Um, and whether it's uh, migration and the ability to bring in the people that we want and keep out those that we don't, whether it's a tax system that is easy to navigate and is raising the money required, whether it's local councils who are being efficient with the funds that they have, whether it's an NHS that's able to treat you should you be ill, whether it's a national um, transport system that's able to get you where you want to go, whether it's national infrastructure like energy, power, water uh, that's doing the services. All of those things, all very well, but it's all driven by the economy. And if businesses aren't encouraged to hire people, to invest, to grow, if entrepreneurs aren't inspired to live in this country and to make their fortune here, 
then you can do all the tax changes you like, all the fairness and all the discussion about the top and the bottom and all that makes no difference. Because if our economy isn't growing, and if we're not able to pump the money that we need into that economy and get things moving again, we're in trouble. So I want to know from you, how would you kickstart the economy? 0344 499 1000. And also tell me who's right to do it. Tell me what you would like to see change. Tell me uh, what it's like working maybe for the business that you work for and whether things are sluggish and whether you can see any green shoots. Hopes of rates cut suffer blows, says the front page of the Times newspaper. Inflation falling more slowly than expected. And what I can't understand, and, and call me stupid if you like, so there am I watching the television news and they're asking people, well, have you noticed that prices are falling? What? Sorry, inflation's at 3.2%. That means that prices are still rising at 3 percent They're still going up. They're just not going up as fast as they used to. What kind of idiot was asking those questions? No, of course I haven't noticed that prices are falling because they're still going up. <laughs> so I'm having a rant. Uh, so can you tell me how you would kickstart the economy? What one measure would perhaps make a difference? Uh, what if you own your own business or you're running a business? What would make you hire more staff? Um, how would you incentivise people to invest or to grow their company? 0344 499 1000. That's the telephone number. Of course, you can send me a text. 87 treble 2. Start your text with the word talk. And you can X slash tweet me at the James Max at Talk TV. Oh, you can send me a WhatsApp as well, if you like. 0344 499 1000, if you can't be bothered to talk to me. Uh, anyway, let's go to... Sorry, spectacles on. Mark's in Leicestershire. Good morning, Mark. Good morning. How are you, James? Uh, yes, I'm very well indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Hope you're well too. So, how would you kickstart the economy? Um, what I would do is I would cut interest rates. And if it doesn't matter for two or three or four years, if we cut interest rates. Thank yes. Hello. Yes. Hello, Mark. You've got your telly on in the background, haven't you? Oh, I, I, well, I'll turn it off. Yeah. Yeah, right, turn it good off. Good morning. Yeah. James, can yeah. you hear me? Yes, yes. Still can hear you, Mark. OK, so you would cut interest rates. Yeah, I'd cut interest rates. I'd cut interest rates, right? And I would install, or um, what's the word, um, get the economy going again. Yes. If, it was need, if, if, if there was a need be to, um, interest rates were what, 3.2% today? Uh, That's so inflation, so interest rates are over 5%. Sorry, inflation, yeah, yeah, whatever. So be it, so be it, right? So the, the thing is, though, that somebody like the Bank of England, they, who are independent and they set the rates, they might say, that's all very well, but we're not cutting interest rates until inflation has gone because that's how they're battling inflation, by keeping interest rates high. No, like, like, let's be, let's be, let's be, <coughs> excuse me, let's be, um, I am a, um, what's the word, a, um, not a politician, uh, I am a uh, economist, right? right? And uh, as far as I'm concerned, what we should be doing is, is what, what are we doing? It's 1.2 percent uh, to what the Bank of England needs or or expects right, before we can get interest uh, rates down. Yes. If we don't get int if we don't get interest rates down, there's no money in the economy. Well, the other, th as you say, and as you correctly say, if you want people to borrow to fuel growth and you want people to borrow to uh, expand their businesses, if interest rates are high, then it costs a lot of money to borrow. And if it costs a lot of money to borrow, then it's got to push your rates of return higher, which means they don't necessarily invest, etc., etc. So, yeah, I can see that. OK, so you would say that's what we need to do. Focus on interest rates. Right. Um, would you like to pick a newspaper or shall I spin the wheel of misfortune? No. Just, just, just before I say this, if you don't mind, okay. When uh, Richie Sumac, what his name is, uh, went on to um, the TV yesterday and say, "Oh, interest rates are coming down, etc., etc." Et well, he actually said inflation's coming down. No, no, no. He also said 
He also said interest rates. Well, he said they right. will. No, no, no. He said inter, He said inflation is coming down. He expects interest rates to come down, which they will, uh, but probably slower than he would like. Guess what happened last week for me? What happened last week for you? My uh, mortgage interest rates went at half a percent. Well, they, they will do because uh, interest rates are higher. The short-term money markets are spooked by the fact that inflation's uh, going down slower than expected. Uh, they're spooked by what's happening in the US where inflation has spiked again to 3.5% because of various things uh, which are going on over there. Um, and interest rates are not expected to fall as fast as perhaps they uh, were before. James, James, can I ask you, I rang them up, right? And guess what? What? It's because it's uh, they put the interest rates up because of their affordability. Because um, of what? what? Their affordability. Uh, in um, Gas, electricity, wages, etc., etc., have gone up so much they can't afford. It's, this is a building society, so it's not a bank, right? Uh, and, yes, but they're uh, going to put up interest rates build. based on prevailing market rates. Anyway, we must move on, Mark. Uh, do you want the uh, Wheel of Misfortune or would you like to pick a paper? Oh. Uh, spin the thing, if you don't mind. Spin the yeah. thing. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So here we are looking at it. You have got... Oh, you've got the sun. So uh, let's just grab the sun oh, for no, you. No, no. I know, I can sense the excitement. A number between 1 and 52, no. please. No, no. Can we spin a game, please? No. You've picked the sun. No. That's it. Well, I don't like the sun. Well, I don't care whether you like it or not. That's what the Wheel of Misfortune picked for you. I don't well, like I the Guardian, but people pick it. I, uh, nor do I either. <laughs> nor do I either. I like the Telegraph. Well, you can't have the Telegraph. A, a number between 1 and 52, please, Mark. Let's go back page, then. No, no, no. That's between 1 and 52. Oh, this is hard. All right. Oh, 51 then. Oh, All right, you can have 51. Let, 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 let's see the football. <laughs> um, so, Kimmich lands vital blow as guns freeze against heavyweights. This is the Champions League. Bayern 1, Arsenal 0. Good. <laughs> uh, oh, how, how rude. Uh, Mark in Leicester shirt. Sure. Thank you very much indeed for call, kicking off our conversation, talking about how you would kickstart the economy. 0344 499 1000. I must deal with some incoming here. Uh, Dan from Kent says, if Mark is an economist, I'm a spaceman. Wow. Uh, Mr Max, you look knackered. Late night. It was a late night, but I wasn't at the party that some of my colleagues were at, which I'm sure you've seen on the socials. Uh, I was elsewhere because uh, I'm involved in a... A uh, charity fundraiser uh, that we do once a year that this year raised, uh, I think it was £276,000 for uh, Action for Children. I'm on the committee of that thing called the Ultimate News Quiz, uh, which is a big uh, event for all the news industry. And um, I uh, was with uh, the people who organised that. And it, I was back in bed a little bit later than expected. I, I don't think I look knackered, though. <laughs> I guess look a little bit tired, perhaps. And also, uh, there has been quite a lot of burning the candle at both ends, uh, which I'll be doing again later, because I'll be back on the talk at six and back on uh, prime time for seven o'clock. Uh, Sean in Gloucester says, Morning, James. I think the economy would get going if taxes and interest rates were slashed. This would free up money that people would spend on things they want rather than necessities. Inflation may suffer a little bit, but that was short term, whereas we have a long, slow death of the country now. Thank you for that. Uh, let's go to uh, Michael, who is in West Yorkshire. Michael, good morning. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Michael. I, I'm hoping I'm not looking too knackled. Knackered. I, I, I know people are saying that I'm looking very tired this morning. I'm sure you'll be able to manage, James. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> anyway, uh, how would you kickstart the economy? Can I, can I ask you some questions, simple questions, or the relatively simple? Yeah, yeah. What is a supercritical fluid? What is a what? A supercritical fluid. A supercritical fluid? Fluid. Fluid? Yes. What's a supercritical fluid? Yes. Uh, I, I don't know. What it... Ah, a supercritical fluid is a fluid that seems to occupy two states of matter 
at the same time. Oh, I see. So something that yeah, is both a liquid and a, and a gas, or a liquid yeah, and a... it's a liquid and a gas. Now, do you know what a deep, advanced, enhanced geothermal system is? Mm. It's geothermal energy. Right. I, are, you right. To, are you talking now, about what, what... Why are you asking me these questions about... Because I want to sort of establish that there's a better way of drilling holes. Well, they don't drill hole. It doesn't drill a hole in the ground. It vaporises the, the deep how's, basement rock. How's this going to fix the economy? What on earth are you talking about, Michael? Well, if you, if you bear with me... I am bearing with you. Well, if it means to say that you could use geothermal energy that don't cost anything to replace oil, gas and nuclear generating 24-7. So what you're saying is, uh, if we drill down into the Earth's crust and we use geothermal energy, yeah. that would mean that uh, we would be able to uh, reduce or, or remove oil and everything else from what we do to create our energy... Yeah. And that means that we would have a competitive advantage against other countries when no, it comes... No, I'm not about a competitive advantage, because other countries would do it, wouldn't they? I mean, if you take the Chinese, for instance, they don't have a lot, a lot of oil reserves, do they? But the thing is, I think the Earth's crust, where we live, is very deep, and the cost it's... of drilling down would be well, extraordinarily no, high. No, no, not using... Well, you could use a plasma drill... You know what a plasma drill is? What's a drill that uses plasma? Do you know what plasma is? Plasma. Uh, yes. What is it? What plasma? Yeah. Well, it's it's isn't it a sort of liquid that's very hot? No, it's gas. Oh, it's gas. gas that's so hot that the electrons are, be, are removed from the nuclei. Right. And so, because um, you've got that much energy, you vaporise the rock, and you do it with something called a gyrotron. Right. right. Um, Which is a Michael, if if this device. is, I, I, I'm rarely um, short for words. Um, but well, you're short for words because you don't understand no. the subject. You've asked a question. Yes. And you have done the basic research. No. A, if you want to find out more about it... I don't. Why? Because... You don't want, you don't want the world to do better. Do you know what the problems of using coal in India is? Um, I'm, I, I guess the thing is, Michael, that you're talking about a, a science which may very well exist, and I'm certainly aware that geothermal uh, heat and, and various other things can be used, and if you go to Iceland, you'll find it there. Why? Because that, the, the Earth's that, crust that, is, that is thinner and all that sort of thing. You won't drill... Yes. Geothermal. Yeah, yes, I understand that. But the thing is that that's not going to solve our economic problems. Well, it will do. No, it won't. OK, well, if, if, if this is such a great energy. idea, Michael, why has nobody else thought of it? Well, these people are thinking of it. It's not me personally. It's just a technical, technical spin-off of MIT called Quays. That's just one of them that's working. And it's... Uh, they present they're, they're going to uh, you drill, drill well you call drill but you don't drill a hole right and the, the, I, I, I'm genuinely <laughs> well why why so do so Doug says Iceland put... already used geothermal power yes, but so, Iceland, so, yeah, but yes. Iceland so, so is why the... isn't Iceland uh, the, the greatest economy in the world then because there's not a lot of people there. And the sort of... Michael, um, might I suggest that you're talking absolute bobbins? What? Well, sorry, what? No, you look up Quays, what? Q-U-A-I-S-E. Look it up. But Michael, I, I think I'd rather eat my own toenails than look up Quays. I, I don't genuinely know what you're talking about. No, well, because you're not very well educated in the subject. Oh, what? OK, well, I may not well be well-educated in this particular subject, Michael, but I think I'm well-educated in other, other subjects, and I don't think this is the answer to our economic woes well, and problems. No. Well, well, you... you I mean, really if, if this is the answer to our woes and problems, Michael, why aren't you the richest person on the planet? 
Because... I've only just read it, and I don't have the money to get involved no. in it. Well, no, it's it's a thing that governments are very like people who's very wealthy. Right. Well, it's, if the I, people who are I, very wealthy, so Elon Musk is is the wealthiest man on the planet, arguably, uh, and he's pushing for things like solar and electric and various other things. If if you're that clever and if it's that smart, then why isn't he doing it? it? And it's not in his interest, is it? That's not in my interest either, Michael. Well, oh, I the path of my life is strewn with cow pats from the devil's own satanic herd this morning. I'm trying to find out how you kickstart the economy, well, and you're that, trying to tell me you, about you, plasma you, and geothermal you nonsense. 24 hours of that, of cheap geothermal energy. And that makes yes, but I go to... back to my point. Iceland has it. They're not the best but and the Iceland, biggest economy in the but, world. But Iceland don't drill deep enough... They... How deep because do you want to go? Said, How hot do you want it to get? Uh, about 450 degrees Celsius. And what are you going to do with that? Well, the supercritical fluid comes That's out... That's not going to solve right. the problems of the NHS, fill the potholes or get the trains to run on time. Oh, no, no. To, the thing is to get cheap energy. Yes, so but we've got the... cheap energy if we want it. We've got nuclear, we we've got solar. So... Solar, it's cheaper than solar, and it's 24 7, which solar isn't. And to do with solar, you've got to have backup batteries, and then you've got all the problems of constructing the batteries. But with this thing, you just repurpose existing uh, power stations by, put, by putting the supercritical fluid right. in the well, water. Michael, when you've sorted that out and you've decided to provide our free energy and you're the richest person on the planet, then do give me a call back and tell no, me how yeah. we kick us out of the economy. See, Until that's done, I'm Michael, then Frank... Year, I'm 70 year old. I just started reading about it. And, but you don't want to read anything at all. Don't you've I? You've got your prejudice. Have I? To do it the same way. I'm, no, I'm very happy. If somebody comes up with a new way to invent energy, and I do get and understand you that if you, if, you, if you have a way of creating cheap energy, then I get it that, of course, you can reduce the cost of production. I get that, Michael, but that's you not going to help us it, next but week. You can, but you can do more things. You can sure. desalinate water. Fine. Which means that a lot of places on the planet can grow food. Fine. I get it. I understand. Then go and but, do it. But... It takes government to do things like that, right. not individuals. You're, you've got this idea that you can go from having very little money and make yourself a millionaire in, th a billionaire in three weeks. Well, you, you can make yeah, a lot of money what, doing other things probably your quicker. Problem, James. Uh, if, I, if, if I could be bothered to the paper bit, it would be the Financial Times. OK. Um, you can have the Financial Times. Uh, a number between 1 and 22, please, Michael. 1 and 22? Well, I won't pick 7 because I don't, I don't like the pony dog and pony show where you say it's 7. Uh, number 11. Number 11. Then you may have number 11. Uh... Princeton's University Endowment, known for its aggressive bets on private equity, is facing the worst ever environment for the asset class as a slump in deal making and public listings weighs on returns, according to the outgoing chief investment officer. Is that Princeton? Yeah. Or well, one of the Ivy League universities? Yes. Uh, in America? Yes. Yeah. So the, the, they run on endowments, a lot of it, from private companies yes. and individuals. Yes. Right. And which means that they're very expensive to go. And if any... Uh, pre prevents a lot of people going because they don't have the money to pay it back. Right. Which is a significant problem with the American pay, pay for university fees. And it's a problem that's occurred in, in the UK. Right. Does it? It doesn't work, does it? Well, it does work. But it just doesn't no, work for everybody. It doesn't work very efficiently. Is it? Really? There's a better way of doing it, is state provision, but you won't accept that. I won't accept... It's got, to go, it's got to go bankrupt because it's private firms that take over the job and they'll have to go to the government because the government is the last resort for borrowing. Right. <laughs> mm. uh, what won't I agree with, Michael? Sorry, what? What won't I agree with? 
Agree with what? Sorry, repeat. Oh, uh, what won't I agree with? You won't agree with state provision for funding it. For funding what? Universities? Your education, yeah. Yes. Well, the thing is that it doesn't matter whether it's state-funded or privately funded. Whatever education system, it still costs money. So the question is, where does that money come from, yeah, Michael? But it's cheaper. It's cheaper because government's been larger, can borrow cheaper. Do you understand how the guilt market works? I do, Michael, yes. Oh, so... Is it, can, the I mean, having, having worked at one of the biggest the investment banks in the world, I'd hope I understand finance. An individual guy. Yes, of Would course you accept can. that? Yes, but uh, government can only borrow so much money before it becomes what? ineffective borrowing. What do you... The gov if, the, if the currency is sovereign, the government can borrow as much as it wants. It, it don't borrow... How are you going to the I don't know whether everybody's got up the wrong side of the bed this morning or whether something weird has happened in a parallel universe. Um, I've asked a really... A really simple question this morning, uh, which I know is a difficult answer, but I wasn't expecting the answers that we've received, so I'm going to put it out again. And perhaps if you thought about calling and you sat on the sidelines, do me a favour, pick up your phone and give me a call now. Interest rates, they're set to fall slower than expected. Uh, the economy is sluggish and inflation remains above the 2% target. How would you kickstart the economy? 0344 499 1000. Um, Dan from Kent says, I think the caller Michael has been watching the film Journey to the Centre of the Earth. Um, <laughs> Paul says, James, will you invite Michael on to primetime tonight? I need an hour long of supercritical fluid special. Uh, no, that's absolutely not going to happen. Michael looks like he's woken you up, Mr Max, says this one. Um, and this one says, have I woke up in a parallel universe this morning? Dan, I think you have. 0344 499 1000. Call me now, you will get through. I want to hear from you. How would you kickstart the economy? I need to know how to kickstart this show. Uh, we'll take more of your calls next. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. 
the UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, 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 did fail her. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Five twenty nine is the time. Quite the show this morning, I think you'll agree. It's me, James Max, with you till six here on Talk. Interest rates set to fall slower than expected. The economy is sluggish and inflation remains above the two percent target. So I'm asking you, how would you kickstart the economy? Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. I'll come back to your calls in a sec. Um, Bessie Boo says, "Good morning, James." Sack Andrew Bailey and Jeremy Hunt for a start. Um, <laughs> Uh, DBTR says, James, for the last 10 years, those on the left kept telling us how migration is superb for the economy. After millions have arrived, we've never been so poor. Um, Snaff makes some comments that I can't read on air. Roger says, uh, your calls so far this morning are just going to prove that they walk among us. Wow. Um, uh, Annette says that she enjoyed listening to uh, Caller Michael and then lots of laughy faces uh, and says, good morning, good morning, Annette. And Grumpy Sora says, James, I hope you're feeling educated after that. Um, and this morning rates is one of the weirdest calls already. Hope the second half gets back on track, says Paul. <laughs> so do I. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the telephone number. Chris in Bournemouth, uh, it's down to you to put this show back on track. Good morning. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur. Uh, bonjour, Chris. Bonjour, Monsieur. Ted du Pomme de Terre. Uh, yes. I hope you managed to get that emoji changed. By the way, which one? The uh, one that had uh, Jerusalem uh, uh, represented as a Palestinian flag. Oh, I see, yes. Uh, oh, I don't know whether it has. Um, you I, said I, you were going to try and get it. No, done. no, no. I, I, know that they're, I know that they're dealing with it. Um, yeah. So... Um, that's, that's an aside. That is an aside. I, yeah. I'll have a look at... Jerusalem... Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, well, it hasn't come up with an emoji there, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me just see if it comes up in, with one in here. Um, hang on a second. <laughs> uh, so we, what, what, where was it? It was in... Was it in X that it came up? Um, oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, right. Um, no, I think, I think the emoji's gone. I think it might good, have gone. Good, good, good. Anyway, uh, yes, carry on. Yes, uh... Two things that I, I, they won't fix the economy, but they, I think they would both help. One uh, is uh, to help. That is, is, is to is to improve the the process of buying, selling, renting, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, over the last forty odd years since I've been doing it. Not, not on any big scale or anything like that. The, com the complications and the, the hoops you have to jump through. So are you talking about the property market? Yeah. OK. So it is very difficult to buy, rent, sell and all that. And the other thing which it's I genuinely don't understand really, is that they've having applied things like stamp duty and all that, I can understand why you might apply tax to somebody who wants to buy more than one home. I can understand yeah. why you might want to um, regulate the, the rental market to make sure that people who rent are protected to a certain extent. Yeah. Uh, but what I don't understand is why the legal system is so complicated and unnecessary yep. and difficult to navigate. I don't understand why estate agents' fees are as they are, which seem to me to be a little bit um, uh, excessive. Uh, and in particular, I don't understand why uh, stamp duty has to be applied in the way that it is. No, I think that, that that's all sensible stuff, and that's you know, you know I'd like to see that because I'd like to downsize personally and, and let my mother's little house go to her family but anyway this that's my but the other thing which nobody really seems to want to talk about but it's all this stuff that we throw away i mean all the stuff that yes. goes in our wheelie bins it's all materials that can be recycled and it either gets burnt 
put yes. in a landfill or sent to another country that makes money out of it. You see what, again, I think you make a really interesting point. If you go to Germany, um, first of all, their recycling system is, is much clearer in terms yeah. of what they do. How they then use that stuff in terms of then recycling in the economy is much more efficient. And uh, they don't have different local councils setting different rules that mean that nobody understands exactly what you're meant to do and whether anybody makes any money out of it at all. And I think if we sorted our glass from our paper, from our plastic, from our food, from our everything else, and if we had a very clear system as to what we had in the same way that years ago when you used to go to the shop and you bought a a, a bottle of fizzy pop and it used to have um uh, a deposit and then you took it back and you got money back when you gave the, the empty bottles back yeah. yeah simple in the 1970s i have to say i think well, we were greener than we are now my dad used to store now, the newspapers but, and yeah. we used to turn them into people used to turn them either into briquettes or they used to compost yeah. them people used to grow stuff and compost all of that Yep. We don't do that anymore. I mean, the whole load of things we don't do, Chris. Throw away society, eh? Eh? Yes. Yep. Yep. OK. So, yep. Oh, there's one other quick thing you could do to oh, yeah. kick-start the economy, and that's lock you and Martin Lewis in a room and tell you to come up with a plan, and it'll probably work. <laughs> I have to say, I've got a lot of time for Martin Lewis. As he will say, he's not a financial expert, but he is a journalist who campaigns and, and, and gets it and understands it. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that he's really worked out is is how to make sure that we're more efficient with our money and uh, and actually getting on the case of government. He's very yep. good at lobbying them and, and telling them. The, the problem is that the government isn't listening. Uh, Chris, uh, do you want to have the Wheel of Misfortune or do you want to pick a paper? Can I pick a paper, please? Oh, go on then. All right. Which one would you like? P.I. Oh. You give him all the choice and then you pick that. A number between 1 and 56, please. Uh, so, uh, 8. 8. Here it is. Oh. Smaller than expected inflation fall hits hopes for a cut in interest rates. <laughs> hopes of a cut in interest rates in June receded yesterday with a smaller than expected fall in inflation. The Consumer Prices Index inflation fell from 3.4 to 3.2% in March, its lowest level for more than two years, according uh, to figures from the Office for National F Making Things Up. Sorry, the Office for National Statistics. <laughs> the Chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, welcomed the drop, saying the plan is working. Meanwhile, uh, other stories uh, related to this. Food inflation, why some prices have come down, but they're also talking about prices which are going up. Rents reach new high as house prices settle. MPs call for an urgent vote on WASPI payouts and how inflation hits generational groups differently, according to Hamish McRae. So there you go. That is the eye. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. You have got our conversation back on track. 0344 499 1000. However, Andy in Southsea says, James, 32 minutes in and still nobody's answered your question. Are you picking your callers using the Wheel of Misfortune today? Can I have page seven of the sun, please? Andy in Southsea, yes, you can. It might be the way that we get some uh, sense. Hang on a second. Andy, you picked seven. There we go, right. Oh. Uh, this is picking up from the sun's front page story that then moves on to page seven. Uh, Prince Harry backdated his new official status as a US resident in the exact day that he and wife Meghan were ousted from their UK base. The royal experts suggested last night that Harry, who's 39, was making a point after being deeply wounded by the order to leave Frogmore Cottage. In an update of Company House Records filed this week, the Duke of Sussex declared uh, the United States his new country of residence. Nobody cares. Uh, there we go. Oh, good. It's Ken and Ken. Hello, Ken. Hello, Ken. Oh, he's gone. All right, well, we'll try and get Ken back. Brendan's in Hartlepool. Hello, Brendan. Good morning, James. How are you? Uh, Brendan, I'm fine, except the wheels have fallen off this morning and I don't seem to be getting any sense from anybody. <laughs> I'll get it back on to you. Right, what okay. we should do immediately as a country is ditch the 25% levy on our electricity bills to pay for wind farms. We should get rid of that so everybody's energy bills that we use electricity will be reduced. Yes. And therefore, that will make at the cost of everything will come down slightly and it might make. Okay. So, ditch, ditch the green levy is what you say. I mean, what yes. I find extraordinary about our wind farms, and I do wish somebody would do some investigative journalism on this, is that so for however many years, maybe 20, we've been subsidising through using Crown Estate land. Uh, to build these wind farms. In some cases, we, uh, the UK taxpayer, have funded the wind farm building and then we've asked a foreign company to buy it and take it over and they've, 
they're, they've made off like bandits. Yeah. Do you know what else they do? Wind farms have to provide so much electricity back to the uh, the, 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 the net, you know, the, the yeah. electricity company. So they actually have standby generators in the wind farms running on diesel to provide the electricity that they have to give back as part of the contract. It's it's absolutely pathetic. The other thing we should do, getting that is to your own back, we should start fracking. That will produce tens of thousands. I, I would love to see fracking. It would make us energy independent, which again will be we won't be at the the beck and call of whoever decides to put the price up. And we should start pumping more oil out of the North Sea and more um, natural gas. So, what do you say to those? What do you say to those who who comment on uh, what's been happening in Dubai, where they had a year and a half's rainfall? So here we go. So uh, a year and a half's rain in 24 hours, Dubai mops up after the desert deluge. Uh, residents wade through Dubai Street in the UAE. E uh, experienced the highest rainfall in 75 years. Uh, officials were forced to deny that rains have been most worked by cloud seeding, which is where you drop bits of um, uh, sort of dust I into the clouds that, to make yeah, it rain. That, yeah. um, uh, so uh, apparently that theory has now been debunked, but the amount of water that fell is absolutely astonishing. Uh, but, well, they're the, the desert. They love the water. Listen, um, I, I, could, I could talk to you for hours about the stupidity of climate change people that say it's man-made. It's got nothing to do with us. It's natural. The climate has changed ever over the last, mille well, four and a half Well, the thing is, I, Brendan, I'm not trying to totally agree with that because the thing is that if you, if you um, knock down forests to put in arable land, that is going to change uh, the environment and the climate. So regardless of your yeah, views on CO2 and what that does, and, and there is also, uh, I don't know, clear evidence that talks about CO2. The question is whether or not it makes any difference as to the measures that we're trying to put in place as to whether uh, carbon will be reduced. It, 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 right. Well, Hartlepool, 8,000 years ago, was under about 300 foot of ice. The, 8,000 years ago, the ice melted and it formed the North Sea at the English Channel, right? There, there wasn't that. You could walk from Dover to Calais. It was a landlocked. The, the ice melted. Now, 8,000 years ago, how much heavy industry was there? How many cars were on the roads were there? It well, I think... And it's natural. The climate change is natural. You can't... The biggest yes, they... driver of climate change okay. is that fusion... The, the argument flat. against... The argument against... Not necessarily against that, but the argument that goes with that is that, yes, the climate changes, it always has done. We've had ice ages, we've had uh, heat, we've had all sorts of things which have happened. We've had solar flares and all those sorts of businesses. What those climate scientists will say is that human existence, and I, you, you can't say, I don't think, that an increase in world population from uh, two and a half billion back in 1970 or 2.8 billion to nearly 8 billion today is not going to affect the climate. It is. Surely having more people is going to affect it. But uh, what they're saying is that human existence has accelerated uh, those changes. And, and I could buy into that. I just wonder how much we can do to, to stop it changing. I think we'd probably be better we, off we, just just um, adapting we, to it. Literally, sorry, we can't do anything. If it's a natural phenomenon, the sun causes climate. The big other, you know, we're on about uh, climate uh, change gases, uh, carbon dioxide isn't the, the biggest one is methane. And the, but the, sorry, sorry, the second biggest one is methane. The, the biggest driver of climate uh, war, uh, global warming is water vapour. What we're going to, how we're going to get rid of water vapour? Well, I, I, I'm not sure, Brendan. Uh, but that's another conversation for another day. Anyway, I, I think we've uh, had some interesting ideas on how you would kickstart the economy. Thank you. 0344 499 1000. Uh, hopefully we'll fix Ken's telephone and we might come to him next if you're lucky. Uh, that's next on Talk. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, oi, right, oi, oi, treat go. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman is a man.
Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, missing. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did to, fail her. Yeah, we're we're supposed to it was another era. That. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Uh, talking to you about the economy, how would you kickstart it? Interest rates set to fall slower than expected. The economy is sluggish. Inflation remains above 2% target. So how would you kickstart that economy? Uh, let's see if we fix this phone line. Ken is in Kent. Hello, Ken. Good morning. Here's a little or little help I'll give you on the economy. I mean, first of all, fracking won't change anything, James. <laughs> it's all rigged to the international price of gas, including wave energy or wind or solar. It's all a complete and utter waste of time. It will not change your electricity bill. Mine's gone down, my gas and electricity, because I'm not at home. Get yourself a motor home, you can save yourself a fortune. No, uh, actually, uh, I think I'd rather wear underpants um, on my head than... Uh, oh, don't my... say that. I'm having a lovely time in Dundee. I'm doing all of Scotland at the moment. We've been off grid for about 26 days. I haven't had to hook up anywhere absolutely self-sufficient in this wonderful motorhome that we've got. We're having a great time. And I, saving money. I, I'm, I'm pleased to hear it, Ken. I'm saving a fortune. I ain't got to pay my gas bill. I ain't got to pay my electricity bill. I've cut down on the water use and all the sewage that they keep dumping on my beach in Winstable I'm not actually contributing to. Lovely. <laughs> <It's> brilliant. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad to hear it. <laughs> anyway, inflation. You won't, you've got a bunch of clouds. Uh, that couldn't run, and I won't say it, up in a brewery. We all know that. Lots of people being sacked at the moment, just picking up on your points you've made today. A lot of people getting sacked because of high interest rates and nobody's investing in the country. Most people are leaving. Everybody I talk to up here in, in Scotland so far, most of them young, are all going to be leaving once they finish university. That's what you're going to end up with. Like doctors, you won't end up with a doctor soon because they'll all be gone because nobody's paying them what they deserve, and that is a living wage. If £36,000 a year is a living wage, you can get real. You can get that filling shelves in Tesco's. And then we talk about elephants in the room. Well, there's plenty of those. Baroness Moan, there's a big elephant in the Houses of Parliament, or the Lord, should I say. 
Nobody talks about that or the other tax dodgers in the Houses of Lords. There's your elephants in your room there. And how do you kickstart the economy? First of all, sack the Tories and then make it law that you can't have anybody from Eton, Cambridge, Oxford or any private school entering the Houses of Parliament. That will then boost the economy. Unbelievable. Uh, are they? Uh, 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 is anybody who's privately educated allowed to do a radio show, Ken? Well, we've had this conversation, haven't we? And I, I, what we've said about private education, I've got, I saw this lovely college up here, St Andrews, no, near St Andrews Golf Course. You want to see the size of it? I'll send you a picture later. That's what private education gives you. The building is absolutely magnificent. It's probably worth absolute fortune. They, they, and that, that, didn't, that wasn't my question. So, am I, up. am I, having been privately educated, Ken, am I allowed to present a radio show? Well, they all get privately educated subsidies, don't they, by us? these schools why is that i can't work that out still. in what way was the school up. that i went to uh, subsidized by you charity charities is they're all charitable status well, it's not all of them yes but that's not subsidy no it is let me tell you why that is if we have a no, conversation it's, uh, it's it means boring, they don't make profit allegedly no but you see the thing is that the money uh, to run those schools comes from uh, a certainly in the case of the school i went to came from uh, a livery company and uh, and also it means that if I went to that school then I didn't use the state education system so uh, arguably um, uh, it didn't cost the country uh, any money at all Ken yeah well arguably I'd love to see the figures that we could have an argument about that yeah I can't I'm be bothered uh, Ken have you got something well, interesting to people. say look at look at all the people most of them that come into the houses of parliament the Lenny Shall I get rid of Ken? I'm kind of getting bored now. <laughs> Lenny, I think I'd rather talk to you than Ken. Is that all right? No, about the well, only you're one more than welcome to, James. Thank you. Ken, I've, I'm bored of talking to you now. Can you go? <laughs> well, I'm still in Scotland. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to OK, be... all right, bye. Uh, Ken, thank you very much indeed for your call. Um, Lenny, we're going to have to be really quick because I've got to speak to Richard Hunter in a second. However, I wanted to squeeze you in before we go and, and frankly, uh, Ken was doing my head in. Uh, how do we fix the economy? Come on. We've got to restore confidence, James. How do we do that? There's no... Well, uh, that, that is very, very difficult because the... the the government of of not the confidence out of everybody, and uh, and uh, uh, and it, without confidence, nothing gets done. Right. Mm, mm. Very di it's, it's a difficult one, but what it is is, uh, uh, you know, there's so many uh, jobs worth with regulations to stop you investing that it's it, it's very difficult to get like small businesses off of the ground. It is very difficult to do that. Uh, just uh, finally, um, to you, Lenny. So what's more important to kickstart that economy? Is it small businesses and encouraging them? Is it getting overseas money into the country? Is it uh, the big businesses that are here and uh, making things uh, easier to invest and, and uh, hire people? What What should the government focus on? Well, I, I started... Uh, an industrial estate for small businesses, or tried to years ago, mm -hmm. and, it, and and the and the obstructions that was put in front of me by Hash, Ashford Borough Council was unbelievable. So you would say and streamline it, local authorities and make it easier to start and go. Oh on with yes, it. because because they are the root of all evil, James. There we go. Uh, Lenny, we'll leave it there for now, but thank you for your call. Let's turn our attention to uh, Richard Hunter, who's Head of Markets at Interactive Investor. Richard, very good morning to you. Good morning, James. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, so, we've been talking about the economy this morning. I'm not sure I've had much sense uh, from some of uh, those who have called in, but there we go. What can one do? <laughs> anyway, uh, an interest rate cut. So, the government heralding saying inflation's the lowest it's been for two and a half years. Uh, everybody else is saying, yeah, but it's not come down as much as it should have done. And then others bit are saying we can't expect interest rates to fall anytime soon. So, what's the reality? Yeah, the reality is uh, we may get one before the end of the, of the year if we're lucky, but you're absolutely spot on. Um, inflation is slowing down, but quite simply, it's not getting uh, anywhere near the uh, Bank of England's 2% target just yet. We're seeing this in the States as well, that the final mile is being extremely difficult. The irony is, of course, in the UK, 
in normal circumstances with the sort of growth we've, we've got at the moment, an interest rate cut would be in order. But obviously the Bank of England uh, hasn't got the sort of growth that the states have um, and is determined to get inflation down. So uh, it's going in the right direction, no question, but not quite enough yet to justify a rate cut. Now, in terms of markets, how are they faring? Yeah, there's, there's, uh, it's similar uh, around this story of when will interest rate be, rates be coming in the states. Uh, interestingly, although, although the the sort of uh, technology indices in the US are going very well, the Dow Jones, the more traditional index, is actually up by only 0.2 percent this year. Now it's actually been overtaken by the FTSE 100, uh, which is something uh, of an unusual sight. The FTSE is up one and a half percent. But overarching concerns, of course, quite apart from the fact we're now in the earnings season. Uh, escalating tensions in the Middle East is one of those things that doesn't help sentiment. It's pushed up the oil price, which of course itself is inflationary as well. So uh, we got some half-year results due uh, from EasyJet. So they're the company that obviously we know as providing, shall we say, cheap and efficient flights, who knows? Uh, but also they've said that they're not going to be flying to Israel for uh, six months until or unless things calm down in that particular region. Uh, what can we expect to hear from them? Yeah, last time we heard from EasyJet, already the uh, Middle Eastern uh, situation was starting to escalate and they had taken a direct impact of £40 million. And of course, this is one of the things that unfortunately comes along with investing in airline shares. You can get volcanic ash clouds, uh, you can get pandemics, and you can get... Um, you know, geopolitical tensions. And it's one of the reasons that uh, airlines are pretty volatile. EasyJet has been up and down uh, in and out of the FTSE 100 and FTSE 250 about four times over the last five years. It's a difficult space to be in. That being said, they have been making a lot more money on their so-called ancillary services, charging for extra things such as food, etc. Uh, but no doubt the, uh, the situation in the Middle East uh, will take some of the shine off of their numbers. And dare I ask, uh, with uh, possibly only 30 seconds to answer the question, but it's an easy question, how would you kickstart the economy, Richard? Well, I, I think um, reducing interest rates has got to be one way to go at the moment. I do appreciate that we've got this uh, inflationary genie which isn't back in the bottle. Um, and I, I think also, if I can say something rather positive, the way that our fintech industry is starting to grow uh, across the country as a whole... Um, could well yet uh, kick us into to some sort of new gear because uh, these, these things take a few, year, few years to, to push through uh, and the early signs are good there. There we go. Richard Hunter, Head of Markets at Interactive Investor. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining me. Uh, I'll just leave you with uh, news. Um, <laughs> James uh, says, Chris in Newbury, ask Ken if owning a motorhome lowers your IQ. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. Anyway, I'm going to be back tonight at 6 o'clock on The Talk, 7 o'clock on Prime Time. Hope you join me then and tomorrow for early breakfast. Meanwhile, it's Talk Today with Jeremy Carl and Nicola Thorpe. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. I mean, there's quite a lot of game playing going on here. Oh, don't start me on that. <laughs> there's a sort of feeling they ought to look as if they're doing something. So don't accuse anyone else of stoking culture wars. Such as the smoke and mirrors of, of politics. Ruminating and fulminating and debating and voting and God knows what. Said they couldn't back the party's position. But the government has got to be more flexible. It's starting to sound like a very expensive show, this, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security.